Hello, my name is Matthew Harrison. I'm a farming system scientist at the University of Tasmania. In this webinar, we'll look at factorial simulations, that is, combinations of different treatments. So, for example, sowing times, fertilisers, irrigation. You can also do different sites, climates, locations, soil types. Basically, multiple combinations. So, you can essentially run thousands of simulations by setting up a few combinations of factors that you want AppSim to simulate. So I, what I've done here is I've, I've actually modified an existing example in AppSim. So if you want to open up the example from which this is based, go to the home file, go to open an example, go to C drive, program files, AppSim directory, examples, open up the factorial, so you double click on it. Uh, I'm not going to do that here because I've already got it open. Uh, you then you then have something that looks like this. So with that sign there, it means it's a factorial thing, that funny looking microscope symbol. So it's an experiment. Probably the important thing is that you won't have this, uh, but this is a summary of all the factorial simulations to be conducted in the simulation. And it's very, very important to look at this after you've modified and manipulated your file in the left hand tree here. So what it's showing you first is a simulation name. While that may look convoluted, it actually makes a lot of sense. So it's the experiment sowing date. So it's the sowing date first, and the sowing date in the first case is the 1st of April, then it's the 1st of May, then it's the 1st of June. So I've done three sowing dates. I've done a number of fertilisation levels, so 0, 20, 60, 80 and 100. And I've done two irrigation levels, so 0 and 100 millimetres. And you can see what the factors are for each treatment here. And you can see that there's different combinations of them. So here we've got three sowing dates, zero fertiliser, zero irrigation. Here we've got 20 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare, zero irrigation. Here we've got zero fertiliser at sowing and 100 millimetres. So you can do all sorts of combinations. So it's very important to look at that to see what AppSim is going to do. Then we have the factors to be simulated. Then we have the simulation details, that is the crop type, the soil type, the climate, the clock. Then we have plots, when I added this folder, we'll talk about that shortly. This is very important, I think this is one of the, you can do factorials in a number of different ways. I think the permutation is probably one of the best ways of doing it. Permutation, as the symbol suggests, it's going to do alternative combinations of these. So sowing date times irrigation, sowing date times fertiliser, fertiliser times irrigation and so on. So if you want to add a factor, you right click, you go add model, you go to the factorial one, you can do a composite factor, double click, or you can right click, go add model, factorial, double click and you've added a factor. Okay, so I'm not going to do those there because I've already done them. I'll delete them out of there. Now, it's important to read these details here. So you can enter factorial commands in a number of different ways. So it can be sowing rule, sowing rule by specifying a number of different alternative values. You can specify a range, so 0 to 200 by step 20. You can specify a path to the component. In this case, it's the weather component. Um, and here you can you actually give the directive. So what this is saying, this is now this is very important. It's saying I want to go to the sewing rule in the base simulation. I want to go to the script component in the sewing rule. I want to find the variable called sew date, and I want to do alternative factorial combinations of first of April, first of May, first of June sewing times. Okay. Um, so we'll go into that just. Um, to show you where it is. I'm not going to talk about these other components. You can see my other webinars for what all this stuff means. Here we have the three rules that the factorial permutations are addressing. So that's the main part. Uh, now I've added this sewing rule. All, to, all you do to that, I've deleted the existing one out of the example and added a new one so that I could actually sow a crop. I'm sowing barley. The default sowing date there is the 24th of July. Note that AppSim will overwrite that with the sowing date up here, with your sowing date combinations. Uh, it will leave all the other details as is, unless you've got those as a treatment in your factorial as well. So if we go back to what I had here, I've got the sowing rule. So it's coming down to this sowing rule. It's going to the script and it's addressing the sow date variable. So if you go to sowing rule, script, 
it's addressing not the the sowing date so it's it's getting that variable there it's calling that one up there so you could do cultivar name you could do sowing depth you could do row spacing or population you could do any of those if you added more factors here so in this way I'm showing you how to do it with an example but you could modify that example to pretty much anything you like fertilizer ops op uh, does in a similar way so fertilizer rule script application amount notice the variable name is different so if you go into here it's in the script so it's pulling out that variable there application amount and it's applying five different levels so 0 20 60 80 and 100 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare irrigation same deal I've just done irrigation script amount 0 and 100 to keep it simple one thing the more combinations you have the longer the simulation will take okay so if we go to irrigation rule I've just got a typical irrigation rule there amount of irrigation to be applied uh, that doesn't really matter I'm just using this as an example but you might want to set that more appropriately in your in your situation all the rest is a base simulation just observe what your clock is because the longer the clock is the longer it will take to run the simulation so in this case I might reduce that to 2005 just so it will be shorter I'll close that down I'll close this down now this is an important point this plots thing so I've added this so you want to have a folder uh, and you want it in the level of the experiment so it will pull out this folder will pull out the information from your experiment after the simulation is run I've done fertilizer applied I've done irrigation and I've done yield first of all let's just see if the experiment will run so it says down here the experiment is running 0 of 30 completed now the reason that I shorted, shortened that clock before is specifically for the purposes of this webinar so that it will run quicker so hopefully it doesn't take too long and you can see it's going up in staggered amounts we don't have an error yet but they'll pop up in real time if you do have them they'll come up as red text down the bottom which means you've either got a typo or you've done something wrong you might want to go back and address it so we just wait for the simulation to complete now don't miss the most important bit which is well the most interesting bit which is looking at these graphs okay so it's very important to get these right so if you want to know what variables to plot go to base open up your report because that's where all the raw data is uh, your default will be properties click the data tab and here's all your data okay so it's got the simulation name sowing date clock if they're blank it means Apsim didn't simulate them um, it's got fertilizer amount and all that sort of thing so if you really want to know what to plot have a look at that first and that will make a lot more sense when you come to the plotting so what I've done here is I've created a graph uh, and I've said well what fertilizer is being applied for each treatment now notice that it's pausing that's because it's thinking because it's actually quite a big simulation so there's a lot of data there to essentially uh, read in and so the more treatments and factorial combinations you have the longer it takes but it's finally open so I won't click anything else now this might look obscure but it's actually not too bad so you've got fertilizer and kilograms per hectare on the Y so notice I've got data source here as report on the X variable I've got simulation ID so I've got 92 different treatments I'm varying the color by fertilizer so 0 20 60 80 and 100 so you can see what fertilizer is applied in different treatments the first these three here have got nothing these ones here have got the most so you're varying the color by the fertilizer if you click on this top level it will show you the same thing but without all of this um, all of these controls here and again I probably shouldn't have done that because that's going to take more time now to uh, read and open but that's okay we can wait for a second so there it goes and if you click on the top level it will show you all plots combined am I game to do it in the context of this webinar possibly so I've clicked on it it's probably going to take a few minutes to um, open but I think it's probably one of the most useful ways to look at them uh, actually because what it does is all of your children plots within that plot folder will appear at a high level so it's useful I guess if you're thinking of a report or a summary or that sort of thing not useful if you're doing a webinar and you're waiting for it to actually click over so it's finally gone over now 
but it's a good good way to summarise and look at all of your treatments. So first of all, the fertiliser applied, so that looks reasonable, and I talked about this before. The irrigation, uh, yes, that's good, so it's just applied the first lot are zero, the second lot are 100, so that's good. Yields, okay, so this is, don't worry about the, um, the legend, it's a little bit convoluted, but just have a look at the yields. Are they improving with my different fertiliser levels and irrigation? Yes, they are. Do they match the treatments up here? Uh, yes, they do, which is good. So that means that the uh, the simulation treatments that we've conducted is realistic. So that's a very useful way of summarising what you want to look at. So that's all I wanted to say for today, folks. But um, just looking at this, just important to get your components, your parent and your children components right. And, the, and I think the permutation part is most easiest. There are other ways to do it. Uh, and that's it. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next webinar.